What's going on? I'm back in the shop today. So this year, down at Lake St. Clair, black and orange has definitely been one of the hotter colors. Um, I don't own any black and orange, so I got a paint uh, lure at least. Um, but most of the black and orange down there is just so boring. It's a black body, orange tail. I mean, anybody can do that. Well, I mean, well that's a good thing, but I wanna do something a little more advanced, something more fun. Came up with a couple ideas. The first one I came up with was to do an orange body and then do a hydro dip type style over top of it. Unfortunately, the hydro dip stuff's gonna take a couple weeks to get here and I don't have a couple weeks. So I'm gonna have to go with plan B and I think I came up with another pretty good idea, but I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Anyway, stay tuned and I'll take you along, show you how I'm gonna paint this lure and hopefully it catches me some fish this year. All right, stay tuned. All right, so I got another lure all primed and ready to go. I'm gonna start with some fluorescent orange by Cretex. Come on, focus. Fluorescent orange for the whole body, and then we're gonna do some other designs after that in black. So we get that black and orange style. I love these Magic Swimmer lures. They can be a little bit boring to fish all day just because it's such a slow retrieve, but they work really well. So we got the first layer of the fluorescent orange down. Gonna hit this with the heat gun. And uh, I might do one more layer just to make sure we get a nice bright orange color. All right, so the next morning, I uh, let that orange base coat dry overnight because I wanted to put this painter's tape on there to get my perch stripes. And I don't want to risk peeling it off when I peel the tape later. So our next step is to paint with the Cretex opaque black here. We're gonna coat the whole thing. Um, and then after that dries, then we'll start putting on some fish scale patterns like this. So I'll get the paint gun all loaded up here and we'll get to work. All right, so I got my mesh all clamped on here. It's nice and tight. So we want no gaps so that the paint can get underneath. And I'm gonna use this metallic paint and uh, just to give it a little bit of a scale pattern, nothing like crazy pop out, but just a subtle natural look to it. So I'll get started putting this on and you wanna just do nice light layers here because if you go too much, then the paint's gonna build up in those little pockets and then when you peel it off, it's gonna drip underneath. So nice even layers here. All right, I'll let this dry and then I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like. There we go, got the scale pattern on there. So next up is we're just gonna detail around where the where the uh, perch stripes are with a dark black and might do some stuff around the face, I'm not 100% sure yet. And then I'll probably do a black stripe along the back there. All right, so here comes the uh, part where we can mess it up or make it look great. So. This is where you want to be really careful. So when you do, when you're trying to outline something, just pull the trigger, push the trigger down on the airbrush so that no paint comes out like that. And then slowly pull back just to start getting some paint coming. And we want to just basically trace where the painter's tape is.
As you can see, it went a little bit hard there already. That's okay. Just trying to work out on the touch right now. I'm trying to get this so that my hand's not in the way too. And then next I'm just going to do a stripe along the back here and just kind of blend it into those stripes. Sweet. All right, let's let that dry. And then we can start peeling off our painter's tape and we'll see how it looks. I'm pretty excited. I'm, I think it's gonna look pretty good, but you never know until you peel that tape. All right, let's peel this paint. I'm gonna be very careful not to nick anything. Just gonna use my knife here to try and get started. Look at that. All right, look at that. I think that's a little bit nicer than your typical orange and black that you see everywhere. Here's the other side. Just gotta get the paint, the uh, painter's tape off the other eyeball here. Awesome. All right, we'll let this dry up for a couple hours, and then we'll clear coat it with the epoxy resin, and she'll be ready to fish. All right, so we've let our paint dry here, and now it's time for my favorite part, which is putting the epoxy resin on. I use this amazing ClearCast stuff. Get this to focus. It's just a 50-50 mix, so part A and part B, you just mix 50-50, even parts. Super long working time, and usually when I mix it, I'll let it sit in the cup for about five to eight minutes just to get a little bit more tacky. So you don't get runs and pools and stuff like that while you're painting it. But without further ado, let's get started. So what I like to do with these jointed lures is I always start right in the cracks, right in the joints. Just get right in there. Trying to be careful not to get it on the actual hinges themselves. But it's important to get in there, that way our paint doesn't peel. If you're doing something that's not jointed, this is a lot easier. Because you don't have to be so finicky around these joints. But once that's done, just try and get all the most difficult spots first, like right around the eyelets. Where your hooks attach. So like I said, you, you got a super long working time, so don't rush it here. But now that we got all the tricky spots cut, covered, it's just a matter of covering all of it. And once you start getting that epoxy on here, 
just starts to come to life. That scale pattern starts to pop, gives it depth. Your shading starts to show up a little bit better. And this is, I guess, why it's my favorite part, because now we're at the finish line. get over to this side now and I've said it in previous videos don't worry if it's not uh, laying flat when you put it on a rotisserie or something like that it will start to lay smooth and you won't be able to tell that there's any lumps or anything like that the main thing is just trying to make sure that you get a nice even coat and you don't put too much on in one spot but the epoxy resin here will start to lay flat over time all right look at that hey eh? what a difference it makes once you get that epoxy on there she's looking pretty good just gonna make sure I got everything coated but then I'm gonna put it on the rotisserie and I'll be back in a couple days when it dries all right there we go she's all done the epoxy's cured for a couple days. To be honest, I actually kind of forgot about this lure. Um, it's probably about a week later, but she's looking good and uh, I can't wait to use her. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And if you made it this far in the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.